Much of the Welsh rugby focus on the weekend was pointed at the autumn international opener with the Wallabies on Saturday evening. But it didn't mask a truly lamentable performance from our four Welsh regions in the Anglo-Welsh Cup that provides a solid argument for making it just an Anglo Cup. The Dragons, Ospreys, Blues and Scarlets crumbled to a combined 17,419 scoreline against Northampton, Wasps, Newcastle and Exeter respectively. And it just wasnt the eye-popping scorelines but the manner of the defeats by the Blues 570 at Kingston Park and the Dragons 417 at Franklin's Gardens when defences parted like the Red Sea at times. Northampton's Juan Pablo Estelles scores their first try despite the efforts of Dragons Joe Goodchild in the anglo Welsh Cup at Franklin's Gardens True the English clubs did have a sprinkling of first-team regulars but the Blues were no means short of recognisable names and the same could be said of the Dragons in the East Midlands. In Newcastle the Blues had the likes of Reen Williams, Tom James, George Earl and Jack Roberts among their ranks and the Dragons fielded Ashton Hewitt, Reinhard Landman and Pat Howard at the Saints. Cardiff Blues players after the final whistle image Hugh Evans agency the Ospreys fared a little better in losing 3,612 at home to Wasps with a youthful lineup that included Locke Rory Thornton and scrum half Reuben Morgan Williams. The Scarlets paid the price for handing 12 players their competitive debuts, and a squad including four teenagers, as they went down 400 against Aviva Premiership champions Exeter conceding three penalty tries along the way. With that in mind we give you Welsh Rugby's winners and losers outside the international arena in Cardiff. Winners Mike Ruddick Former Wales coach Mike Ruddick It was the perfect weekend for Wales Grand Slam winning coach. Not only did the Lansdowne head coach see his side cement top spot in Division 1 of the Ulster Ban All-Ireland League with a 90 victory at twice winners and title rivals Clontaff, but the former flanker in Dragons Supremo had time to dash to the Aviva Stadium to watch Sun Reese come off the bench to help Ireland to a record 383 victory over the Springboks in their opening game of the Autumn International Series. Ruddick has been the man with the magic touch at Lansdowne, the club that kick-started the rugby careers of seasoned Irish internationals like Gordon Darcy and Devon Tone, who became their 100th capped international, when leading the Dubliners to their very first All-Ireland in title 2013 and repeated the feat two years later. Now it seems the ex-BBW Vale coach could be in line for a Lansdowne triple crown. In August we reported how the rugby club with a proud history of punching above its weight to produce Wales and Lions stars could be forced to fold, after having just three players training in the summer. Pyle took to social media to reveal their plight in raising a team. The Mid Glamorgan Club have a proud history in the Welsh game winning the prestigious Silver Ball in 1976 and 78 as well as lifting the Division 5 Central Crown in 2009. But they were in real danger of folding after 86 years in existence. They have produced a number of Welsh internationals in that time with arguably their greatest player being fullback Jack Bassett, who played five times for the 1930 Lions in New Zealand and Australia. Scrum half Clive Shell, fullback Howell Davies and back rower Tim Forville were also former pile players to go on and win Welsh caps as did Tornock prop John Richardson in the late 70s while at Aberavon. The club posted on their Facebook account calling out all rugby players if you fancy a season of pain then Pyle RFC is the place to play this year. At this moment we are struggling with only three players training so the chances of having a side this year are very slim. Slim they may have been back in August but players did answer the clarion call and Pyle reached fifth spot in the table on the weekend with an excellent 5,522 victory at Aberav on Green Stars to leapfrog the hosts in three West Central A with three wins from seven games thus far. Ray Leelo and Kieran Fonotia Scotland's Tommy Seymour is tackled by Samoa's Ray Lilo at HASNT being the best week for Samoan rugby with a union announcing it was bankrupt. Among that backdrop you would NT have expected such a stirring showdown with Scotland at a sold-out Murrayfield on Saturday. They may have been on the wrong end of a 4,438 scoreline but Blues centre Lilo and Osprey's counterpart Fonosha can head to Twickenham on November 25 with her head held high after playing their part in a Scottish spectacle. Lilo was his usual all-action self while Fonosha capped off his performance with a close-range try to give the Pacific Highlanders a real sniff of gate crash and Gregor Townsend's first home match as Scottish coach. But they hung on while Samoa at least know for their clash with England, the Red Rose will give them a reported £75,000 as a goodwill gesture to help out their current cash crisis. It was highlighted in Edinburgh when replacement scrum half Milani Matavo joined the fray after 52 minutes. 
HE's been compared to New Zealand star Aaron Smith, but being the only member of the Samoan squad still plying his trade in his homeland, he gets by on 550 taler a year, which equates to 45 a day. Callum Sheedy Cardiff-born Callum Sheedy kicks a penalty for Bristol The Cardiff-born outsider half qualifies for Wales, Ireland and England and has just penned a new two-year deal with Moneybags Bristol. And judging by their 5,510 demolition of Rotherham Titans in front of a bumper 8,184 crowd at Ashton Gate a swift return to the Aviva Premiership is on the cards for Pat Lamb's side. And Sheedy certainly played his part on the weekend apart from slotting over four conversions and a neat dropped goal. He provided the moment of the match with a when surrounded by a gaggle of Rotherham defenders and tackled just short of the line he threw a miracle offload into the hands of Tuzi PC who used all of his power to get over the whitewash. Pontypreth and Newport there was one winner and one loser at Sardis Road on the weekend but these two principality premiership rivals deserve all the plaudits for a game that would struggle to be better this season. Though Ponty emerged 4,745 winners both sides crossed the whitewash seven times to give their respective defence coaches plenty to ponder this week. Home skipper David Lockyer was followed over the line by Rhys Shellard, Alex Weber, Geraint Walsh, Morgan Sienievski, Gary Williams and Diggy Bird. Bird also boasted three conversions and two penalties. Matt O'Brien was the standout man for Newport as he bagged a hat-trick of tries and kicked five conversions. Henry Palmer crashed over twice with Geraint O'Driscoll and Chase Smith also going over. Newport head coach Craig Wallow said that was a ridiculous game. We got off to a great start but we were terrible for the rest of the half. We know we can play and can score 40 points against anyone but then you just can't go and concede 47 points. Mirtha RFC Dale McIntosh There's been a bit of niggle between the Ironmen and Bedwas in recent seasons with some key players at the Bridgefield heading up the A470 to Mirtha. And having lost 3,724 to the WAS at home back in September you can bet your bottom dollar Mirtha head coach Dale McIntosh had his charges sparked up for the return. Mirtha didnt let the Chiefs down taking a 130 half-time lead and thanks to a penalty try and two Matthew Jarvis penalty goals. In the second period Christian Phillips killed the host's momentum with a try for the Ironman, converted by Jarvis who had kicked his third penalty of the game just minutes before. This is always a tough ask to win at Bedworth, said McIntosh. We know what a strong, honest side they are and coming after two losses we knew they would not want a third. To their credit they worked hard but we stayed in there and played some nice rugby even if we could not get four tries. Merthyr's sixth consecutive victory season remained second but they are now four points clear of Bedworth, who started the weekend level on points with the champions. Scott Andrews Scott Andrews, the 13 times capped Welsh tight head made something of a surprise move to Bath in September on an initial one-month loan deal with the Aviva Premiership Giants in the midst of a front-row injury crisis. HE's seen some action off the bench for the wreck outfit and has now earned himself a 12-month extension to his loan period. And he got 80 minutes under his belt on the weekend and helped a strong-looking Bath outfit avoid and potentially embarrassing home anglo Ulsh Cup defeat to Leicester on Saturday with the Tigers sending what resembled a third-string outfit to the West Country. Trailing 3,119 to a young Tigers outfit in the dying minutes, the powerful Bath scrum took centre stage with a strong surge providing the platform for Zach Mercer to cross and then after back-to-back -back set-piece penalties, the referee eventually ran out of patience and awarded a penalty try two minutes from time, which was enough to decide the spoils. The reward was a second win of the competition and a place ahead of Wasps at the top of Pool 1 with two more games to come in January and February. Loses George Watkins George Watkins in action for Bristol It was two Welsh wingers squaring off at Vallis Way on the weekend when Ealing Trailfinders took on Yorkshire Carnegie in the Green King IPA Championship. And it was Will Harry's 1 George Watkins 0 as the Trailfinders romped to a 4,419 to leave them sitting in second spot 8 points behind Payset as Bristol. Watkins moved to Cardiff Blues in the summer of 2014 boasting a phenomenal track record in the West Country, touching down 58 times in 100 appearances. He qualifies for Wales through having a Monmouth-born father and there were mutterings he could be winging his way into Warren Gatland's squad once in situ at the Arks Park. But it didnt work out the way he hoped and he was soon back over the bridge with Bristol before moving to Jersey Reds last season, having spent a lone spell with Mosley. H.E.'s in Leeds this season though his trip to London with Carnegie too.
play an Ealing club, packed with Welshmen, was one to forget with the hosts running out easy winners. Bed was it WASNT that far back that the bridge field side were top of the Principality Premiership East, beating defending champions Merthyr on their own soil and surveying all before them. But they headed into the rematch with the Ironmen on the back of defeats against Pontypridd and Newport and were unable to halt the slide in fortunes against Dale McIntosh's side. The WAS are still third despite falling to a third defeat on the bounce but are looking over their shoulder now with Cardiff just two points behind them. Coach Ian Gardner bemoaned another error-strewn performance but was pleased with the team's effort in the 2,312 loss. In our last three games we are making too many individual errors and not playing well in key areas, he said. We are trying offloads that are just not working and we need to win to give us momentum. But I won't blame the loss of three good forwards who carry the ball well and this side can never be faulted for the effort they give. Cardiff Met Cardiff Met RFC Director of Rugby Danny Milton It's something of a topsy-turvy season for the college that helped nurture the careers of Gareth Edwards, JJ Williams, John Bevan, Clive Rowlands, Dewey Bebb, Alan Martin, Bryn Moore Williams, John Devereaux, Ryan Jones, Jonathan Humphreys, Ken Owens and Alex Cuthbert. Their midweek team had won six of their first seven matches to lie second in the British University's College's Sport BUCS Super League table, seeing off Nottingham, Trent, Bath, Hartbury, Durham, Leeds, Beckett and Loughborough along the way. But their Saturday side in the Swalwick National Championship are finding the going a little tougher. They have a recent 3,510 victory over Skew and to their name but sandwiched in between came a 7,414 defeat at Leaders Pontypool and a 4,419 home loss to Tata Steel on the weekend. While the college football team sit proudly at the top of the Welsh Premier League the Met could be dragged into a relegation dogfight being a point in front of 11th placed rider fell in with Glyneth while adrift of the bottom. But the championship table is tight with Newbridge, in fifth spot, just five points in front of the students. The Scarlet Scrum Anyone watching the Scarlet's 400 anglo Welsh Cup defeat to Exeter Chiefs in West Wales on Sunday afternoon would have worried for the health and welfare of the home forwards. England internationals Ollie Devoto and Matt Kovesic started the game for the Aviva Premiership champions, with Red Rose hooker Luke Cow and Dickey in reserve. Exeter's forward power proved the difference between the teams. The Scarlets did have a number of their players away on international duty and others preparing for back-to-back -back Guinness PRO 14 games in South Africa but what is achieved exposing youngsters to a strong-looking Exeter lineup is anyone's guess. The Scarlets were unable to deal with the visitors' momentum and as their scrum went backwards at a rate of knots, referee Carl Dixon awarded a penalty try. Then home substitute Javen Sebastian was yellow-carded for pulling down an Exeter Mall, Dixon once again blowing up and running between the sticks for a second penalty score of the afternoon. Frontrower Stefan Thomas was the next home player to be sent to the Sinbin for an infringement. There was still time for yet another penalty try as Exeter made it around 40 points by the full-time whistle.